Welcome and greetings fellow audio enthusiasts. My name is Jason and this is another episode of Two Channel Listening. Now I'm a bit different from those other YouTube reviewers in the fact that I like to swim up a completely different stream. I go out of my way to find brands that are often not talked about, less mainstream, and certainly I love to review products or models that are overlooked on a regular basis, or in some cases just not talked about at all within a model lineup. The other thing that I do that's a little bit different is I go after the second or open box products. I really go out of my way to try to find those particular items that will really help you stretch your coin for a higher performance to value dollar value ratio. This week is no exception as we travel to Cambridgeshire, England, where the Hobbits are making integrated amplifiers. No, not really, but I am going to be reviewing today for you the Cyrus Audio HD1 integrated amplifier from Cambridgeshire, England. Now, Nobody can talk about Cyrus Audio without first bringing up its vintage heritage with Mission Audio, Mission Speakers. So in the late 1970s, Mission Speakers decided that they wanted to produce a spin-off company that focused more on the electronic component side, the audio electronic component side. In 1984, Cyrus Mission actually introduced its first two consumer grade products and that was the Cyrus 1 and the Cyrus 2. What is very interesting about the Cyrus brand in of itself is they really do go out of their way to bring some different tech, different flavor, and some advanced manufacturing processes to the audio world. So that little Cyrus One integrated amp in 1984, it was basically a 25 watt class AB amplifier. It sold for only 130 pounds. Adjusted for US dollars today, that's about $470. That would still undercut a Rega Brio. They would use only these half size chassis. So by providing a half size chassis, they basically came up with their own mold, and it's not this unit I'm holding, but the first molds for the Cyrus integrated amplifiers. It was a steel and plastic design. The, the bottom of the molding would integrate itself or would have the heat sinks integrated into the bottom molding, and I'll, I have some pictures for you to share you'll see that Mission Cyrus in the actual bottom plate of the chassis itself, along with all of the heat sinking. So with that mold, they eliminate having to buy separate or add separate chunky heat sinks that take up and steal real estate in the chassis themselves. So by not having to have those additional parts, not having to take up additional real estate that also allowed it for short, shorter circuit paths within their integrated systems and they didn't have to have it as high of a part count. So you got a smaller chassis, you save money and weight on heat sinks and you're able to shorten the signal path for your amplifier and preamp section. That in turn gave them the ability to have a very high dollar value to pound ratio product that they offered to the public. And to this day, Cyrus sticks with those half size chassis. They produce phono preamplifiers, full on amplifiers, preamplifiers, many different integrated amplifiers, as well as some pretty cutting edge CD players back in their day. What we're talking about today is the Cyrus One HD. Now the Cyrus One HD is the middling child of three products in the latest one series that they offer. 
But before I talk about the fit and finish of the chassis itself, I have to give a shout, a shout out to my drug pusher. I mean, my audio representative over at the Music Room of Colorado, and that's Ben Jillian. Ben has been helping me out with several products lately, and come to think of it, when I counted them out, one third of the products that I've reviewed on this channel have come from the Music Room of Colorado. Now they specialize in robust trade-in programs. They take in a lot of trade-ins and trade-ups, but they also offer lots of brand new manufacturers products direct, such as Peachtree, NAD, Harbeth, Rega, name on and on and on. And that's how I ended up with so many of the products that I have that I have on my review channel. Lots of them are open box, some of them are demos. I just picked up these awesome Rubicon 2s from them. And Ben Julian's the man, he does a great job. Customer service there has been fantastic. As a matter of fact, I wrote the owner, Josh and Ben, a couple weeks ago. I was so impressed with the meticulous way that they packaged the Rubicons because it had to come in two separate boxes with their matching stands. They really pay attention to the finer details that make my life easier and take stress off of me from having to deal with so many different buyers, or I'm sorry, so many different sellers and the packaging and shipping process. For any of you out there who's done a lots of buying and lots of shipping, it's just, it's inevitable that you end up with something that's damaged. Luckily, nothing I've ever received from the music room has come with any problems. They do a great job and I'm able to buy stuff at a really good price from them. So if you're interested in stuff that they have, I'll put the link in the description, reach out to Ben, let him know that two channel listening sent them, let them know, let Ben know that Jason at Two Channel Listening sent you and they can hook you up with some pretty awesome prices, even on stuff that they have advertised. So just give Ben a call. Now, the HD. I chose this HD, the middling child, specifically because of the asynchronous USB input. While their entry level first product is just basically the integrated amp with the uh, Bluetooth Aptex, they use the Qualcomm Aptex chipset, I guess, if you will. And that will allow for, they say that allows for 24 bit of playback, 96K uh, resolution. Now, the entry level one is $999. This unit with the Sabre, Sabre DAC in it, the 9018 K2M, the same one that's in this peach tree, this is the $1,500 retail price integrated, 100 watts Class D hybrid, fourth generation in-house design by Cyrus themselves. This is not an off-the-shelf uh, Hypex, B&O, Encore, blah, 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 Purify. No, this is Cyrus's own take on how Class D impl uh, implementation goes. Now, the case, the fit and finish before talking about its overall performance. It is very utilitarian. It can be a bit on the Spartan side and what I like to call three-year-old proof. And I say three-year-old proof because the front plate is as simplistic as it can get. You have this hidden power switch that has a very loud clunk. You know if it's on or not. It's too bad that the LED lighting system isn't red because when you hit that power button and these little LEDs sweep back and forth, for a moment, I thought that Kit from the Knight Rider was reincarnated into an integrated amplifier. But nevertheless, it is three-year-old proof in the fact that this front volume knob only goes back and forth, has a nice click to it. It's got a little bit of a rubbery texture to it, but it is plastic and it does not click. So there's no mute function like the peach tree. Same as with the left side here or my right side. 
This is the source selection. There is no clicking. It is basically you just roll through the source that you want to choose and it's nothing more than that. The full size headphone jack is hidden underneath here, tucked away. They use this black plastic front that if I ever commit a crime, all they have to do is come and take my integrated amplifier and they will be able to match me up with anywhere that I have gone. It's reminiscent of all of that black plastic that's in the new, uh, it's manufactured in the newer cars these days in the center consoles. I'm not that big of a fan while the faceplate is very simple and you can adjust the lighting. I'm just not a, it, it doesn't scream hi-fi to me. It doesn't scream, you know, higher end. Yes, this is their, their bottom of the line entry level products, but for $99 more, this bad boy sitting right next to me, if I were to put my soft shoes on and make a decision on aesthetics alone, I'm picking this lovely peach tree with its brushed aluminum face, the, you know, the mocha ebony veneered plate, and just the way that they do the, the lovely grills for the, you know, for air circulation. Nevertheless, the top plate is, is kind of neat. So what they have here is it's a steel chassis, steel lower and upper that are connected with these four, uh, four screws. They have the, the Cyrus name and blazon on the top, and they say that there's a little bit of a rubberized texture to this, this steel plating, which I'm sure is supposed to help a little bit with the, the ringing and dampening. For those of you who keep asking me about these, that's why I have these. When you put that on there, it cuts that, that little bit of ringing down. Not that you audibly hear that from your listening, but for me, it's just an annoyance that something can, is so kind of, it rings. The way that they molded it, it has these nice dimples. If you were to buy their classic line, the upper classic line or their top of the line XR, there would actually be uh, physical heat sinks that you would see. So this would be cut out and there would be actual heat sinks within the chassis themselves. Since this is the class D amplifier, it's not necessary to have that heat sinking. So you basically, they just did that little bit of molding there. Now what's, pretty unique for this class D hybrid integrated is this very chunky toroidal transformer that's on the inside of the chassis with this very robust bolt that's holding it down and again a little bit of that heat sinking for the toroidal transformer. You have this venting here as well as venting along the sides because what they did and I have video of the interior of this piece you have your toroidal transformer, you have the smoothing caps behind that, and then there's a bit of space in the board in the bottom where they have the class D, those, those transistor chips, and they're mated to the bottom so that that's where the venting comes into play. Now under heavy operation, never letting this thing turn off fully, and you know, again, my normal 85 plus dB playback. With my infrared gun, this never, never got hotter than 94 degrees in my room, which is kept between 72 and 75 degrees. And just as a, as a comparison to the peach tree, same thing with the peach tree running all day long, never turning it off. With its venting system on the top, it never would get over 88 degrees in room. So, you know, a six degrees difference with this closed design and those chips uh, made it to the bottom of the chassis itself and no real heat sinking necessary, I guess. So, from a, a what the high value functionality standpoint and what you're getting for that $1,500, I had already mentioned the Bluetooth DAC with the AppDex has the asynchronous, it has the, the Sabre chip, the 9018K2M. You have two sets of binding posts for bi-wiring. You have a pre-out for adding subwoofers. You have AV bypass for those that do like to use a higher quality amplification in your, in your uh, home theater system. It does have a little upgrade USB here, uh, a separate USB connection for upgrading the internal bits or firmware. 
and you also have a couple of extra inputs for if you've got CD player, SA CD player like I do, or tape. The Cyrus prides itself on the moving magnet option that they have for their entry-level integrated amplifiers. I'm not a vinyl guy, so I cannot comment on that, sorry. I am a tried and true USB-B music listener using my high definition downloads from hd.com or using the uh, Amazon Prime downloads themselves. Here's something I do have to say that's pretty cool and good on Cyrus as well, is that they make the claim that with their Toslink or their coax digital ins, you still get 24 bit or 192 playback. I can think of some almost some almost twice as expensive integrated amplifiers that don't even come close to adding or giving you that level of high definition playback. One of them being musical fidelity. So having said all that, you are getting a lot of functionality, a lot of utility with this $1,500 integrated amplifier in its 100 class D amps, 100 watts. And it's 100 watts of hybrid class D amplification. Before I can give you the hardest, the hardest AB review that I have ever done so far, I have to take a turn and walk down Rant Street. My boys at Cyrus Audio, if any of you happen to watch this video, you really bollocks this one up for me. At $1,500, you're forcing me to use an app as a remote when your entry level first one has a credit card remote. Guys, what the hell? Do you see this Nova 150 right here at $99 more? Do you see this remote, this full function remote that also allows me to pause, fast forward, do everything with my Amazon HD or Spotify? That's simple to use, guys. This at times was very obnoxious to use with the Cyrus phone app. And I take a video of it. I show you that even though it's already connected, even though it's already dialed into my phone, all the different processes in, in screen swapping I would have to do every time this is turned on and off. Ub freaking noxious. For $10 more, give me a bloody freaking credit card remote and we'll call it good. All right. Okay. Now, while I know your app is supposed to be smart and when I had incoming calls, regardless of the music playback, it would mute the music. I'd be able to take the phone call and it didn't play through my speakers. So thank you for that. That was a nice touch and that's a smart way to do the remote. However, when trying to do volume matching playback, that made it very difficult constantly going in with each different song because they all play at different loudness levels and having to reconnect and do the volume again. These little increments with using my finger back and forth or tapping the screen give us a remote. Now I know your marketing department is super proud of themselves by saying that, oh, with the remote, you don't have to have line of sight with the amplifier to change it or adjust the volume. Line of sight, I'm right there. Most people listening to their music are, are within, you know, visual sight of their amplifiers. Are we talking about changing the volume while I'm on the potty? Come on, guys, that's a weak one. The app's fine for those that want to use it. $10, give us a credit card remote at the very least. If Peachtree can do this, you guys can do better too. Okay. I'm walking off of Rant Street now. 
Now for that setup and proprietary design, the Cyrus versus the peach tree with my four speakers. There's one other bit in this kit that's quite interesting that'll come to play in with the last set of speakers. And that is that the Cyrus has what they call SID. And that is the speaker impedance detection system. So upon hitting this little button and getting the little Knight Rider flippy flu with the, the lights, you will hear an audible signal being sent to the speakers. And that is the impedance detection software that's in the Cyrus integrated amplifiers. It is basically, it's reading your speaker cables themselves and the impedance of the speaker, and it is adjusting the amplification setup in the amplifier so that there's a better match with what it's needing to do to give you optimal playback. It's quite neat, it's interesting. I did bugger around with it a little bit and seeing if I could screw it up and, and change its mind. There was multiple times where I purposefully plugged in different speakers to each of the different outputs and this, <laughs> this Cyrus 1HD definitely noticed what I was doing and didn't like it. It would kind of pull back the sound and the, the volume a little bit, trying to figure out why I had an 86 dB speaker connected to a 90 dB speaker. And so that was interesting. I, would, I, I did that just to see if there was some reality to that system and the controller in there, knowing that I had that big of a difference in speakers. So there was something going on there, and, I, and it certainly came to play when it comes to the zoos, but that's for last. So from least efficient to most efficient, the Sierra 2EX Ascend Acoustics, 86 dB, uh, you know, eight ohm nominal, kind of really six ohm nominal speakers. Here's where I have to go with this. To get an acquired, to, you know, to, to, to acquire what's going on here and to, to audibly understand what I'm dealing with, I always start out my amplifier comparisons by using an outboard DAC. I have my Marantz ND8006 outboard DAC slash CD player and I again I use the USB from the, the Marantz so with the Marantz in place the, the outboard DAC of the Marantz in place with both the Peachtree and the Cyrus I could not detect any notable difference with my speakers playing with an outboard DAC now yes when I used the Bluetooth DAC within the Cyrus by itself I knew I was using a Bluetooth DAC. For one, as I stated earlier, I could hear the sheen, I could hear a little bit more brightness, I could hear some more edge. You know, does it satisfy most users? Probably, but when pushing it harder with my speakers, that's when I could notice that brightness that's not there when using the higher quality internal DAC and using hardline cables. So, you know, for me, I'm not still a believer in, in going 100% Bluetooth streaming. Until they can match high definition, I want to use the USB uh, hardline cables. So with the Marantz in place, both, both integrated amplifiers in their preamp sections, man, the, the playing field was so level. Guys, I could not find any real noticeable difference to, to report back to you. Both Class Ds, both of similar power implementation-wise, the preamp sections are only so sophisticated. It sounded great, don't get me wrong, everything sounded wonderful for what these price points are. Very, very happy, and that's why I've been playing at these lower price points compared to some of the older gear that I had that was five-figure gear. So I know what that gear can sound like. This stuff sounds great. So it's not that, it's just the fact that trying to hear, you know, real audible distant differences with outboard connections, it really can level the playing field that much. This is a theme I've said in many of my reviews. Speaker differences just from these four are night and day. Absolute night and day in the speaker differences but when it comes to 
class D amplifiers against each of the speakers, very hard to detect. So taking out the Marantz and just judging these guys on integrated internal DAC and preamp all by themselves with the Sierra 2EX, the peach tree had just the littlest bit of more muscle, little bit of a larger presentation. And what I mean by larger presentation as in with my eyes closed, things felt wider, just slightly wider and slightly taller with a smidge of more relaxation in the um, sound staging. And when I say my version of, of relaxed, relaxed sound staging does not mean resolution loss, not at all. What I mean is in its forward or backward presentation to where I'm sitting. And the, the only thing of real note between the two amplifiers, most of the time with most of the songs, the Cyrus would feel like it was one to two feet closer to my listening space than the peach tree. So therefore I would say the peach tree had a more relaxed presentation versus the Cyrus. No, you know, no giving up of resolution between the two. Again, they both have the same DAC setup and they both have class D implementation. This was the hardest review that I have ever done trying to find true differences throughout the speaker range. Once I plugged in the Rubicon 2s, the Dolly Rubicon 2s, same thing. The peach tree had a wider soundstage. It was just slightly pushed back. The Cyrus felt like the musicians themselves were standing just slightly closer to one another. And so, you know, there was just a tighter, a, you know, a tighter grouping of what the soundstage would be like. Like it's just a little bit more intimate versus the peach tree, a little bit more intimate, a little bit closer to, to my position. No notes stood out. There was, again, there was no loss of detail. The resolution throughout all the speakers was absolutely the same. They wouldn't, one would not give up anything to the other, regardless of the type of format, the songs, or the, the bit rate played back. Just there toe to toe the entire time. These guys are brawlers. I had, our president of the Boise Audio Society over, and he specifically wanted to hear my Emerald Green, my British Racing Green performance ones from Eric Concepts. He introduced a new song to me that was an excellent song that if I had vinyl, I would have worn it out trying to find those differences between these two amplifiers. That song or that band is Club for Five. They did a cover song of Brothers in Arms. And their cover song is mostly vocalization with harmonies. The lead singer with his deep baritone, those green speakers and the bass. This is class D amplification. That's what these two guys specialize in. They can grip the woofers and they can play those bass notes like no other integrated amplifiers business at these price points. I felt the voice in my chest. I felt that lead singer just baritoning right into me, the vibration, it was hitting me in the chest. It was awesome. The sound stage was very wide for both amplifiers. I was hearing music bouncing off even the ceiling. I would hear some of the, the background noises within the song bouncing off of the ceiling. So with the 90 dB performance ones, I heard no difference at all. Absolutely zero difference. It was frustrating, trust me, very frustrating. Now, here's where the difference finally did show up. And I have to wonder how much of it had to do with the, the Cyrus SID. So the Zoo Dirty Weekends are 97 dB speakers with 12 ohm and pendants. Now, when I fired this up and I heard that test signal, it was louder, obviously louder with the zoos because of that efficiency rating. And I could hear it doing that quickly. And then once I started to go through my playback, it was interesting, the Cyrus 
actually took a little bit of the aggressiveness, a little bit of the edge off of the zoo's presentation. While normally those zoos are just, they're in your face, they are rock speakers, they are electronic plane speakers, they love to pump out at high SPLs, the Cyrus did a really admirable job of just like an artist sculpting stone, taking a little bit of the hardness off of the zoos. And I have to say from a synergy perspective, this Cyrus matches really well with those zoos. And as much as I like the peach tree with the zoos, if I were to choose one or the other, the Cyrus would definitely marry well with those zoos. I was pretty impressed with how it kept all the bass notes there, but with that really aggressive mid-range that they have, just shaving that little bit off really made it a, a pleasure to listen to for such extended periods of time. And it was, it was a pretty surprising marriage between the two. Once you get into the least efficient speaker, that's where you know that sound stage would start to shrink a little bit with the Cyrus, and the peach tree stayed true with its headroom, and it just could continue to play larger or give you a larger presentation than the Cyrus. Now, a month ago, I had the name 5SI. At $1,690, the Cyrus beats the name in every category. I'm sorry, name fans. I know you guys really do not like what I had to say about your beloved product. I was not impressed with it, especially at $1,700. This is an amplifier, has more power, has more feature sets, has a Sabre DAC integrated to it. This is a true, you buy speakers and add this to your system and you've got a rocking system that no matter what's going on, you have it simplified. With the name, you have to add an additional DAC, you have to add additional other products, and the name is just even more relaxed. While some would like to call it a little bit more refined, it just didn't have, in my perspective, the resolution level of the Cyrus. The name was more polite, not relaxed. This would be more relaxed than the Cyrus. The name was even much more relaxed than the Peachtree as far as that soundstage presentation. Now the name did give up resolution to the Cyrus and does give up resolution to the Peachtree. I would say the Cyrus has the, the most resolution if I had to really, at gunpoint, that last 1% of, of additional character, the Cyrus has that. The Peachtree, Again, wearing my soft shoes. Aesthetics, the peach tree has it. Headroom with inefficient speakers, the peach tree pulls ahead because it played a little bit larger with that sound staging. As far as resolution goes, they're spot on. As far as, as control over bass, neither one gives up any room to the other. As far as the treble, uh, you know, that class D trouble that some people can complain about, I had none of that. With the, all those speakers that I have on hand, at no point was anything grainy or shrieky. The only time that there was some sibilance or brightness introduced into the system was only if I actually switched over to using the Bluetooth streaming in the Cyrus, and that's only because I'm just not a huge fan of streaming Bluetooth music and losing that last bit of resolution. The Cyrus can give it to you, but there, it did introduce a little bit of brightness for me with the speakers that I have on hand. Number one, my Unison Research Unico P is still number two. It's a hybrid class AB amplifier. I would say that the Cyrus at $1,500, had it had that remote, Physical remote, oh, gosh, that would make it that much harder, but that was really only down to just being a, a bit of a pain in the butt from a, from a functional standpoint. I'm judging these on sonic character alone. 
because I do have these more inefficient speakers on hand and the peach tree did show me that that little bit of extra headroom was required to play a bit bigger with the less efficient speakers. If I only had the zoos on hand, I have to be 100% honest, I think that the Cyrus matched up with the zoos better. So if I'm just a zoo owner and nothing else, I would say that the Cyrus would be the choice for those speakers. But since I will have many, many, many other speakers on hand, I will have many other less efficient speakers on hand in the future, the peach tree remains my reference piece moving forward until I find something that can knock it off. Great job to the team at Cyrus. The middle entry level product or set a different way, this is the second from the bottom of the lineup. They still have two more in the classic line and they have two more in their XR line. Now, I don't think I'll be playing in the XR level line because that, uh, I think that's $3,800 for the second from the top and $4,200 or $4,300 for their top of the line integrated XR. That's outside my comfort zone for what I do in the reviews that I bring to you guys. In other news, three weeks left. Oh, hallelujah. I know I sound like a whiny baby, but I've got three weeks left and I'm moving into my new house, my final house with my family. Well, I say final house, that might have been hopefully not a premonition of anything else. However, three weeks left. Next week is an off week. The week after that, I review these lovely Dolly Rubicon 2s. And after that, the third week, I will be moving in. I will have a much larger room. It'll be set up. I have acoustic panels on the way. I will be introducing many different aspects to you guys. And I will actually be taking it to the next level, doing something similar to what Ron does at New Record Day and reviewing. I'll do my normal review, and then there will be a companion uh, music video that's only going to be about the music and using the different selections and musical selections that I use for my test tracks with all the different speakers and amplifiers that I introduce. I hope that will be of value to those of you who like to listen to some more of the lesser known brands or lesser known models that are out there, not doing so much of those mainstream products that get pumped out into the marketplace. You'll let me know in the feedback, you always do anyway. Uh, we hit 2,250 subscribers. Thank you so much for all of the support for this channel as it's hit its six months. And it's been an interesting journey. Nevertheless, I will continue to invest into this channel. It costs a lot of money to do this, guys, from the cameras to the mics to the lighting, buying that high definition mic moving forward, buying the acoustic panels. There's a lot that goes into us. So, you know, it helps me to gain subscribers and to have separate reviews that can be monetized. And that's why I'll be asking for, you know, a subscription service in order to do the actual 30 minutes of playback with those companion videos. If you think there's something else that somebody else is doing that would work even better, I'm open. Go to www.twochannellistening.com. Send me a direct message. Give me your thoughts on what you think would work well. I'll, I'll read it. I'll give it some thought. And I'll let you, and I'll let you know. But other than that, you know, this is, this is, this is fun for me. I, I love doing this. I love giving support to those undervalued products that are out there. And, uh, at the end of the day, it helps me enjoy my music in many different facets because when it introduces different tonality or different textures, there's just more appreciation that I can have for that, for my favorite music. And I hope that you guys are able to, to experience that as well. So with that, one more review in the apartment, the Rubicon 2s. And after that, oh, <laughs> I have a much larger room. Y'all be kind to one another, please enjoy your music and I'll see you soon.